Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Good morning, good morning to you all, those who have managed to attend. Also, for those who have managed to log in. I'm happy you are already on. As someone has suggested in the chat, I don't think we'll wait for the others. I've waited for uh, some 10 minutes despite uh, uh, network related challenges, but I think I'm now sorted in terms of uh, the network. And uh, I think we are ready to begin. For some of your colleagues who may not have joined uh, the session yet, please uh, notify them that we are already on. Okay. So let's look at uh, four year series. I'm not following uh, the content uh, as. Uh, displayed uh, why uh, it's also being uh, quite sensitive to sudden changes uh, we finished laplace we should have done uh, z transforms next but i'm choosing to do uh, fourier series first so that you start practicing them why uh, it's because uh, moving from Fourier transforms and uh, then we switch to PDEs, some people may not have got enough time to practice them, yet uh, we will need to use them as uh, key prerequisites. Uh, these concepts of a Fourier, trans a Fourier series and Fourier transforms <laughs> will have to depend on them as a key prerequisites to, to fully comprehending uh, PDEs, because in the PDEs we apply, uh, we can solve PDEs using uh, uh, Laplace transforms, and those transforms will also be embedded uh, into uh, Fourier transforms. If, especially if you're solving uh, some of the PDE, not even some, but uh, mostly the second order PDEs, even first order. The nature of the solutions uh, heavily depend on these concepts that we are going to discuss. So I want to finish this off first. As people go through the exercises and uh, they practice, uh, it will give them a leeway or a leverage in uh, quickly understanding what we will do when it comes to to PDEs. So let's first do this, and uh, when people will be practicing, probably we'll uh, do uh, Z transforms, or we'll go straight to PDEs, and then we do Z transforms last. I was not in a hurry to do Z transforms because what we are going to do in Z is a heavily, heavily uh, similar to what we have been doing in uh, Laplace uh, transforms. So that is the other second reason uh, for change you have a switch of mind. I didn't want to use the same language over and over because uh, I will still bump into those step functions, the heavy side functions. And the only difference we've been using uh, mostly what you call uh, a geometric series or a geometric progression. Uh, everything is centered mostly about uh, the geometric series. So some understanding of sequences and uh, series which will be picked from your real analysis, some of the key concepts you covered in real analysis. So I'm trying to, all that I've said, it is simply justification of why 
I've chosen that we first do Fourier series and Fourier transforms. Okay, uh, we are now around 45. Uh, the others are still, I think, asleep. They'll join in if they wish to join in. But for now, let us continue. Uh, we are 15 minutes into since they are already time. So I would think, I would guess that uh, any serious uh, student really by now, even if he or she had uh, network issues, uh, by now he or she would have resolved those challenges. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this session uh, is being recorded. So for those who will miss, uh, they'll get the recorded version of this lecture. Right, uh, so we introduce ourselves to uh, Fourier series and Fourier transforms. Uh, these ones are key, by the way, in uh, understanding some of uh, the would be volatilities or what you would call a sudden changes in uh, uh, given uh, dynamics. For example, uh, in uh, actuarial science, or if I may go specifically and point out uh, insurance, mathematics, all of financial mathematics, uh, Fourier series are very key in there. Why? Uh, it's because if you want to understand uh, the fluctuations that uh, take place, especially when one is trying to understand uh, the strength of a sharing with respect to a dollar, uh, there are those sudden changes uh, that could be studied using uh, a stochastic process, but because uh, the nature of stochasticity uh, can change depending uh, uh, on uh, the factors at play. Uh, sometimes you need to look at that analysis with an incorporation of uh, these Fourier transforms. Why? Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, when we talk about these Fourier transforms and uh, we start to understand the dynamics, we will basically talk about uh, the two functions, that is uh, the cos and the sine, those are the mother functions. And in there, so let's talk of a uh, stochastic. Uh, if something is a stochastic, it could behave like this. Then maybe it goes down and it settles probably like that. This is an illustration that should be easier for you to understand because you guys I've already done dynamical systems. So in here, there could be a component of noise, uh, which can easily be removed. So if you have to think of removing noise, you, 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 you can see these peaks uh, quite fast. So uh, there is some stochastic component that could be uh, used in studying a system that gives you this kind of dynamics. And uh, you have a choice if it was something smooth like this, if you had used the deterministic model and you get, let me call this one A and I call this one B. Uh, this one cannot really uh, be a good demonstration of what to call a, a system uh, that is a highly volatile. Uh, volatility can be easily demonstrated in B, but sometimes you may want to control the situation in B and you bring it into, uh, to you want situation B to be ex exhibited as a situation A. And in this case, it would mean uh, either removing the noise if there is a chaos, you can move from a chaotic situation into a noisy situation and from a noisy situation into a smooth uh, situation. Of course, chaos is the worst, but you did the chaotic uh, dynamics or behavior in the dynamical systems. I think it was uh, Dr. Juliet, I think Nakakawa handled doing that under dynamical systems. 
So uh, in those systems, uh, you will realize that <coughs> you will realize that uh, uh, for this situation in B to be changed into situation uh, A, one of the key components that can be incorporated into uh, B. From A to B, uh, here it is easy. You can, uh, rather from B to A, you can incorporate a Fourier transform. Why? Uh, because here you deal with the, uh, a sign and the cos. And I am sure you know that uh, the behavior of a sign and the cos lies between uh, uh, negative one and one. Mm -hmm. So you have a negative one here, you have a one there. So you have a dynamics that does like this. Uh, for one of the trigonometrical functions, then you have uh, another one that will do something like this. And of course, you know what happens here. For negative one, between negative one and one, you cannot go uh, outside uh, that interval. So, and you know when you deal with the, uh, the angles, so you have a zero, if from zero you go to probably uh, 45, that would be pi over four, or pi over two, pi of course being 80. So how key is this? Because uh, this kind of situation, if you have to smooth in it, you may incorporate uh, a Fourier transform or a function in terms of uh, a Fourier transform so that the situation B can be made A. Uh, of course, if you control it to A, this is a smooth uh, economically or with respect to that physical power process or phenomena that has uh, uh, this noisy behavior. Uh, in A, you can easily control or you have actual control over that system because here it's smooth. And with the smoothness, uh, intervention can easily be found, which is uh, different if it is uh, highly uh, chaotic or noisy. Sometimes it is uh, as smooth as in the air and you want to incorporate noise in it or chaos. So I'm sure some of these things I'm mentioning, uh, Dr. Juliet Nakakawa, must have mentioned them when uh, she was handling in dynamical systems. So this is uh, one key area of this. And once you say it is in a dynamical system, then it brings in all the other fields. And one of the biggest fields now from uh, financial or actuarial science is now uh, engineering uh, uh, related kind of uh, dynamics because uh, uh, dynamical systems is a key in a system uh, that an engineer comes uh, up with. He has to do uh, what you would call structure analysis Structural analysis uh, informs the stability of uh, uh, anything that is going to do. I have generalized the word engineer or engineering. I've not gone into the subdomains of the different forms of civil, mechanical, uh, environmental engineering. There is uh, these days what even they call uh, uh, anthropology. Uh, they are now engineers specializing in anthropology, uh, which is uh, psychological because this is uh, something to do with the behavioral dynamics. But why all of this? Uh, if you have a system and uh, that system uh, is used to model a certain kind of uh, phenomena, or you are using it to address uh, a, an existing problem, then the question is how reliable is the solution to that problem? And what should you do to guarantee the existence of that problem uh, despite uh, 
some challenges that uh, may not easily be uh, overcome. You build a bridge, uh, a bridge should be stable, it shouldn't develop cracks. Then uh, how do you ensure that that system is stable over a certain period of time? We have oil in Mulisa. Uh, if assuming there is a pollution there, uh, how would you take control of that pollution? Uh, if there is an oil spill uh, and you put in some uh, control checks, then how uh, certain are you that those control checks, if an actual spill takes place, uh, that spill, uh, in terms of environmental related kind of engineering, uh, the dynamics of that will be according to what you have uh, simulated or animated. Animations are uh, representations. So uh, this uh, Fourier transforms comes in uh, in guaranteeing some of those stabilities. I know in your dynamical systems, you just uh, did stability analysis uh, using all of the different techniques of Lyapunov, using weighted functions, name it, blah, 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 blah. But here now we are saying, uh, how do you, uh, if you've obtained that dynamics, then what guarantee do you have that uh, that dynamics can be used to avert an emergency? Then uh, this one, the Fourier transform techniques can be brought in uh, because now you can see if this is a body in motion, uh, that is in a category B in terms of mechanical engineering, then we could say this is a highly harmonic because of uh, the nature of these uh, sudden blips in the dynamics. So this is a highly harmonic, but now when you try to compare A with B, uh, now that uh, high order level of uh, uh, the harmonic kind of uh, motion in B, in A, it is controlled. So if that is the case, then the question is, uh, how do I remove this uh, high level harmonic uh, motion and uh, I control it or reduce it or regulate it to a uh, control level uh, kind of harmonic motion? then those are some of the techniques that can come in uh, to handle that kind of issue. Right, and of course you can go into the medical field. I'm sure uh, you are now doing, uh, what is it called? Is it biomath? Uh, by Dr. Hassan Dumba. He will uh, cite some of these uh, as methods that can be used to guarantee you uh, what you do call a plausible solution or a credible, reliable, and dependable solution. Okay, so uh, here we'll start with just a few basics. Uh, I'm sure you've understood the why, and now what I'm going to dwell into is the easiest, and that is the how. Uh, at this level or university level, the most important thing is understanding the why. Once you've understood the why, the how is usually the obvious, which you can also do yourself. Okay, so let's go into uh, a bit, some basic introductory uh, kind of uh, concepts, which are quite uh, direct in a way, but I'll just quickly rush through them. So there are some concepts that we'll need to know. And here we are going to heavily depend on uh, calculus two, that is the integral calculus. Techniques of integration, they are yours. I have already revisited some of them in Laplace transforms. So it shouldn't be a problem, guys. So let's first of all understand orthogonality uh, and with orthogonality, there will come in even and the odd functions and then some of the properties associated 
with the odd and the even functions. Uh, we'll come through why. It's because in these Fourier transforms, we'll try to understand uh, what they call a Fourier cosine. And then there is a Fourier sine. And you realize that uh, the existence of a Fourier cosine and a Fourier sine uh, has a lot to do with understanding whether the function uh, whose uh, analytical solution you are trying to establish uh, has to be categorized as either even or odd. So that's why we start with uh, these basics. So uh, we can use this to understand uh, an inner product. And uh, once uh, we understand an inner product, these ones you should already be knowing, those who have done, uh, 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 that is what, linear algebra two. And uh, some who have done abstract algebra, you already know what I mean by an inner product, but uh, we can use quickly. Go through, so you have two functions. Uh, we are trying to understand orthogonality here. If you have two functions, F1 and F2, we are saying there will be orthogonal in that interval on a condition uh, that the integral uh, that lies within the in, uh, integration of the two functions within that uh, given interval uh, gives you a zero. That is uh, this statement you see here uh, that I could call uh, equation one. That is that equation there. So that is basically the definition. And then you can check if two for a function is orthogonal uh, by simply computing the inner product. So if you have F1, which is X squared, you have F2, which is X cubed. Uh, we need to ascertain or establish if uh, these two functions are indeed uh, orthogonal. Then we simply use the definition. So the interval given here is minus one to one, meaning our integral will be from minus one to one. And we differentiate, rather we integrate the product over those two functions. That is now x squared and x cubed, that gives x to the five. You integrate, you'll definitely get that. Uh, substitute the upper and lower limit, you come up with a zero there. Okay, uh, these are other more examples that uh, you can now go through. Uh, that's why I said the how is the most obvious. You have a sign and the course, you go through that, uh, you will check that that is actually uh, a zero. Okay, all of these are examples for you. Find the inner product of this and this. When you simply go about those, uh, you will uh, quickly get to that. Okay, and then here we have orthogonal sets. Uh, we've already understood uh, uh, an orthogonal function. What about a set? Uh, here, with respect to a set, uh, you can have a sequence. Eh? And uh, that sequence, uh, because you are dealing with the two functions or the three functions, uh, it would imply that now you may have to quantify uh, those different given uh, sequences as uh, sets. And then uh, uh, you do the computation uh, with the keeping in mind that. Uh, uh, some of the given uh, sequences may be non-exhaustive. And if they are non-exhaustive, then you have to find a way uh, of uh, making sure that uh, the nature of the solution you'll get uh, actually converges or uh, it diverges. But usually what you want is that it converges because uh, uh, the convergence comes in with uh, the primitiveness of uh, uniqueness. Okay, uh, that's where somewhere in the probably maybe next week or after next week, there would be third or fourth lecture 
we will see uh, when it does a uh, uh, transform converge under what conditions and there will heavily depend on also uh, calculus uh, two, which is still, okay, it will be calculus one and calculus two, I think for that. Okay, so why am I saying that is that in here when we have a certain interval A to B, but this A to B with respect to the given functions, uh, this is uh, uh, phi m and, uh, and, and, and phi n. So if you have phi m, you have phi n, it means that uh, m for m running from uh, uh, one, all of the way we could say from one to infinity and the n also runs from one to infinity then the question is uh, how is the product uh the inner product of those uh because uh, uh if you have phi one you have phi two you have phi three those are different functions so that's why i'm talking over a set for the first one we only looked at two so what if you have more than two that's why we talk of a set now. So uh, we are saying in that case, uh, the integral will be zero on condition that m is not equal to n. And uh, we generalize the nature of the solution it will give uh, when m is equal to n. And here we are simply referring to it as k. But we are going to illustrate that more. And uh, this will be key in uh, the nature of the analysis we are going to do because you realize that uh, uh, the dynamics is periodic in nature. So that periodicity, because uh, uh, we are going to be dealing with the angles uh, uh, or radial or angles in the radians. Uh, then there is, of course, that periodicity. Remember, I've already drawn a graph showing you that once you're dealing with the sine and cos, uh, it will always run between negative one and one. Uh, for those who started with me, who started with me the lecture today. So in that case, by the way, before I forget, as soon as this session runs out, uh, please log back in. This lecture is going to run up to 8 a.m., exactly 8 a.m. So as soon as this time is out, please log back in using uh, the same uh, link. As always, it is recurring in nature. Okay. Uh, yes, I had explained this equation 3.31. Uh, so now we have a set here. So uh, this is an orthogonal set. And if you look at uh, what you have here, so you have a uh, one, you have a cos, you have a sine, then this becomes a two. Remember we have M and N. So if you have, uh, you have M, you have N, this one, uh what does it uh, uh this one runs from what you have zero one two three so this one can be zero one two all the way then you have uh this one is zero one two and you go on like that so uh you realize here uh you have a one then you have uh, the first n because we have generalized here you have m pi uh, x over l uh, what is the l uh, the l is the interval so we are dealing with the cos and sine uh, most of the time you are moving from uh, uh, the interval uh, because of the nature of the dynamics is usually between uh, negative one and one so when you have uh, minus L, this is a closed interval. Then you realize that uh, here you are doing uh, uh, the entire, we are remaining with less than uh, a minute. So uh, 
This session is going to time out very soon in the next few seconds. Please log back in. So uh, if you move from zero to L, uh, because this can change, uh, this is what you will call now half range. And this half range you will call for some of the properties we are going to discuss here with respect to whether it is uh, a Fourier sign or a Fourier cosine. Because instead of this full range, you now have a uh, half range because from minus L to zero from zero to L. So if it is zero to L, it means this one has been uh, scaled down to this. This one is scaled down, but you can as well upgrade uh, 